Hi, this is Shira Rubinoff. I'm here with Insights in Tech. I'm here with John Medved, CEO of R Crowd. John, pleasure to have you here. It's great to be with you, Shira. Thank you. Thank you. John, as a background, can you please explain to our audience what R Crowd is and what it does? So we're the world's largest equity crowdfunding platform that allows essentially regular people who have some money to invest in startups and hopefully uh, make not only a return on their investment, but have the ability to contribute to the startup's progress and to help build together companies. We have over 200 companies who've raised money on our crowd. Uh, we're managing about 1.4 billion in commitments uh, worldwide. We're headquartered here in beautiful Jerusalem, uh, and which of course, for many of your viewers, I'm sure they know us as the startup nation. And we also provide opportunities for people to invest in funds. So we have about 20 different funds. The minimum investments for the companies are about $10,000 a piece. And for the funds, it's $50,000. In the US, you have to be what's called an accredited investor, which is someone who has a net worth of a million dollars of investable assets outside of their home. Wonderful. Very impressive. I've been following you for some time. So, John, when it comes to venture investments, there's been some concern in the startup community that investments have been put on hold during this time of uncertainty. Our crowd has been discussed in their investments in startup companies. They're actually in the forefront of investing in COVID-19 progression type companies. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Look, I, I think that... Um, there are some funds that are what you call triage mode, yeah. which basically means that, uh-oh, we're in this terrible crisis, build anything, we just wanna you know, save what we can. Yeah. And we think that a crisis is a terrible thing to waste. Um, there are huge opportunities that are now becoming apparent, both in companies that already had solutions for trends which are now accelerating. So when you take examples of telemedicine or telehealth, uh, i.e. the ability to diagnose somebody from afar without getting in close contact, that was a great idea two and three years ago when we made investments in companies like TidoCare, except that now it becomes obvious and that company gets accelerated, just announced a $50 million round. Same goes for a company like Psych Diagnostics, who are experts in doing point of care blood testing, literally taking two drops of blood and giving you a complete blood count in 10 minutes without having to wait days for lab results and whatnot. It was a great idea when we invested five years ago, except that right now as a result of the crisis, it's accelerating. And we'll soon be offering investments in uh, candidates for vaccines, stay tuned, as well as different kinds of testing for COVID as well as therapeutics and all the other areas where we feel that the, the new normal, as it's being described, is going to drive a lot of the digital economy forward. Wonderful. And what would you say to some startups today that are a little bit skittish about trying to move forward in what they're doing? Obviously, a lot of startups, sometimes when they have investment, they pivot and their offerings sometimes are that much different. What type of pointers can you give to some of them who are nervous in this type of economy? Well, first of all, it's good to be nervous because uh, the economy is, is, is choppy, right? In other words, if you're unfortunately involved in travel services or in uh, co-working and whatnot, this is not a great time to be in that business, uh, more difficult than, than, than it was a little while ago. Uh, on the other hand, if you're involved in fighting viruses or you know, uh, uh, protecting health professionals or uh, actually ensuring that remote workers can work at home safely without being hacked by uh, predators out there, this is a, a, a great time. But for everybody, you've got to be really careful with your money. Uh, many, many companies need to cut their burn rates to reduce costs, unfortunately, to trim the size of their teams or to take pay cuts for those who are staying with the team so that you can make the money last longer. It turns out that the easiest money you can uh, raise right now is the money that you save. If you're a startup and you save, let's say, $200,000 a month on your burn, then guess what? Over the next year, you just raised $2.4 million. 
Over two years, you raised 4.8. And that wasn't dependent on another investor, it was dependent on your actions. So we're urging our uh, companies where possible to trim their sales, to be very, very cash efficient. And we're very lucky that here in the startup nation, uh, our companies make uh, more with less. That's, that's basically in their DNA. Well, that's a great perspective. And on the flip side, what would you say to investors who are thinking about maybe tapping into the investment world right now and investing in some of these startups, obviously pulling back more than they typically would, but actually want to make an investment now? Well, I, I think that if you look historically, you'll realize that uh, down markets were great times to make investments. Investments, uh, especially in startups like wine, is a vintage-driven business, meaning that you, you don't always know what vintage is going to turn out to be great. And you'll hear from a winemaker, wow, 2020, that's going to be a great vintage. You don't know. You know, we'll know four years, six years, eight years from now how that vintage turned out. That's the same way with venture capital. Um, and therefore, when you do venture, you definitely want to try to average in over time because of that uncertainty relative to vin uh, vintage. However, one thing you do know is that when markets come down and prices come down, that's always a good time to invest. And when, uh, uh, when startups are on sale as they are now, that can often provide a great entry point. The problem is you have to invest in the right startups that have the right kind of uh, momentum, backers, ability to get through these difficult times, and that won't uh, essentially fail from the only really mortal danger facing all startups, which is disease of running out of capital. True, very true. And John, in your opinion, how do you see the ecosystem of Israel's startup community in terms of growth and investments beyond COVID-19 during 2021? Look, I, I think that, um, first of all, COVID-19, unfortunately, will be with us for a while. And I, I'm, not, I'm not of those who believe that, in Hebrew, we say, zbang in gamarnu, you know, boom, and it's over. Uh, I, I have a uh, pretty strong hunch that we're in this for uh, a year, year and a half. It's going to take a while. We're, even in the companies that we're going to be backing, that are working on vaccines, this is not something from today and tomorrow. Uh, many of these realities that we're facing now are going to be long-term trends that we have to get our arms around. Um, but Israel is particularly well-suited to weather this storm. Uh, we have a very, very strong ecosystem with all kinds of support, not just from investors like our crowd, but from hundreds of multinationals who've set up shop here and are going nowhere. In fact, the multinationals are having a field day because to the extent startups have been shedding some of their people, they get hoovered up by the multinationals who figure that good talent is available and they're hiring them. We also have great support from the government and a tremendous sort of international network where people have appreciated the Made in Israel brand, the Innovated in Israel brand, and are consistently looking both to invest, to partner, and to buy ultimately our companies. So I'm quite bullish really on how we're going to do. I think that it's going to be not trivial and not easy, and there will be many companies that will fail along the way. That's part of this business, right? Not everything works, but there will be great companies that are built and are uh, essentially tried in these difficult times and will come out the other end much stronger. Well, thank you. John, it's a pleasure speaking with you, and thank you very much for sharing your valuable insight to our audience. Shira, it was a pleasure being with you. And uh, to all of your viewers, stay safe and healthy. And we look forward to innovating together and seeing you on the other end of the process. Thank you. I look forward to speaking to you again soon.